Hello, thank you for watching today. This is Your True Shelf. My name is Sarah and today I'm going to be talking about my top books of the year so far. So for the first half of 2018. Um, I didn't read as many books at the beginning of the year because I only started doing booktube in April time and before that I read probably two books a month which is pretty slack compared to um, a lot of the people on here and I've now upped it to probably about five books a month as a minimum so I've got more to choose from from the last three months and some to choose from before that. Um, I didn't have time to make any videos last week because it's been so so busy with work um, and the evenings have just barely happened before I've had to go to bed after work so um, this is why this is a little bit late and I've got lots of ideas for things coming up after this. So if I kick off, I'm not doing these in any particular order just because I found it really hard to choose them, let alone to put them into a, a, a top order. My first book is this one, which is um, The Spark of the Machine by Dr. Daniel Keown. And this is a non-fiction book about acupuncture. So acupuncture is something that I've been thinking about training in um, for quite some time. I'm still thinking about it. Um, and if I do train in it, I want to go to the school which um, Dr. Keown has set up. And so that's why I wanted to read his book. So the, the premise of this book, he is a traditional Western medicine doctor trained in the UK. But he's also studied um, traditional Eastern Chinese acupuncture. And what he's done is he has made a book which is um, very different to anything that's been done before. Because he has combined Western medicine and eastern medicine into a book to say how they're both saying the same thing just in different ways so this book is about acupuncture but it explains all the concepts that are very um, different to western medicine it puts them all into language which is common to both so it's, it explains how concepts we have in common are just called different things and how he's made them tie together is really remarkable so um, if you're interested in acupuncture or interested in um, complementary therapies, I would definitely recommend giving this book a try. My second um, one of my top books is The Narrow Road to the Deep North by Richard Flanagan. This is a book which is absolutely amazing. I did a whole video um, pretty much dedicated to this book, which I will link in the comments. Um, and it's about um, Dorigo Evans, who is an Australian... He grew up in a poor family and became um, a surgeon and he is um, in the war in the Second World War and he becomes a prisoner of war for the Japanese and this is about his life beforehand when he meets and falls in love with a girl called Amy who is married and it follows their life before the war and it follows their lives after the war and well during the war. Um, we know from the beginning that he survives as a prisoner of war because he is featured as an old man at the beginning of the book. There's some twists and turns in this book. The the capturing of the everything about being a prisoner of war is absolutely phenomenal. The the smells, the sights, the hunger, the starvation, the wounds, the the sickness, the mud, the slave labour. It's just um it's absolutely amazing how he's how he's written this book and it's very brutal, but it's very honest. Um but I can't recommend it high enough, it's brilliant. The third book I wanted to recommend is The Kite Runner by Khalid Husseini. This is the second book of his I've read. I've read A Thousand Splendid Sons twice because I absolutely adore that book. And I found this in a charity shop and I picked it up and it is just as wonderful. So this is set in Afghanistan and in parts Pakistan. Um, it's set before, largely um, before all of the modern day events have happened in Afghanistan and... Um, it was, it's really interesting reading about what Afghanistan used to be like. Um, and it follows um, two, two boys, so Amir and his, and his dad and um, his best friend who is called um, Hassan. And Hassan and his father are servants to Amir and his father. And Amir's father is very powerful. Amir is always trying to impress him and win his affection. And they, don't, they never quite click. Um... And it's about the relationship between two boys when there's a life-changing event which happens in their lives, which basically changes their friendship forever. And it's about the events which happen after this. And um, it's a very powerful book. It's 
beautifully written the relationships in it are gorgeous like the father-son relationships the best friend relationships the brother relationships it's really interesting how it's set in another culture and um i really can't recommend it hard enough it's absolutely fantastic and just love carly tussani's books i have um and the mountains echo still to read and i'm saving it just because i just love his book so much the fourth book is this one this is um the um the last runaway by tracy chevalier and i have uh if I so she has dedicated this and signed it for me as I saw her at the University of East Anglia Literary Festival, which is where I picked up a copy of this book. So this is um, about um, the Quaker religion in a way that plays a part. And it's about slavery. It's about America in the 1850s. It follows a young lady called Honor Bright, who is a young Quaker who um, comes from England and she emigrates over to America in the 1850s to be with another Quaker family where she is intended on marrying. And when she gets there, she finds out that um, she's going to, so she was going to be living with another couple um, as well as her betrothed. And the husband of the other couple has died, so it leaves his widow and her betrothed. And she gets to the house and she just thinks, oh, I really don't want to live with these people. And so she's not very happy. And she meets a woman called Belle, who is a real character. And um, they become really good friends. And one of the themes of this book is about quilting. So Honor is an amazing seamstress and she quilts. And she makes these fantastic quilts. And they make them in a different way in America. And they're quite critical of her quilts and she's quite critical of their quilts. And um, quilting is like a really um, important theme for the building of friendship in the in the book. And also slavery, because Honor is staying with the family that she was supposed to marry into. And um, she finds a runaway slave on the farm. And the family are really um, against her helping him, because it's illegal to help him. And um, so it's all about the slavery... Um, the slavery at the time which is also really interesting uh, it's about female friendships female relationships and there's several strong women characters in this book and um it's written in dialect in parts and um it's it's really well written and a really really good story as well and i really couldn't wait to pick it up every time one of my last choices is the idiots by elif batchman um, this is a book which was shortlisted for the Women's Prize for Fiction, didn't win, um, and it follows a young girl who has just started university called Selin, and it follows her as she goes through her first year at Harvard, and it also follows her friendship with uh, another girl called Svetlana, and also her um, falling in love with um, a contemporary called Ivan. And this is a book that will not be for everybody, it's... Um, it's very, um, how can I say, it's very literary, it's got quite a lot of academic um, bits about language in it, it's got some additional stories within the story, um, you will either like Selin and her friends or you won't be able to stand them, it's it, a lot of minutiae about her thoughts, about her obsessions, um, but I felt like it was really authentic how her brain worked, I felt like I was really in her head, um, I, it's a really clever concept of how um, Selin is super clever, but she's very naive and she doesn't have any um, she doesn't have any sort of worldly knowledge. And it's about trying to mesh the two together. So some people will hate this book, I'm sure, but I really liked it and it's in my top books of the year. The next couple of books I don't have with me, so these are the last ones. Um, I have Love Simon, which um, is also called uh, Simon versus the Homo Sapiens Agenda, and this was a film which was released um, as an adaptation of the book, which is how I became aware of the book. And it is by Becky Abertelli. And it's about um, a teenage boy called Simon who is um, trying to come out to his friends and family as being gay. And he forms a secret online relationship with one of his peers in class. They don't know who each other are. And they just email back and forth and they fall for each other that way. And it's, um, it's a really... Um, I think it's a really honest and authentic um, version of young adults and their lives at the moment. I felt like 
the author really had got inside their heads. She was um, speaking the way they'd speak. She was acting the way they'd act. It brought back a lot of memories about that time in life. And I really liked the cultural references, the song references. Um, it was just a really, really lovely story and a really, pa a really good page turner. I read it in two days. I probably could have read it in a day had I had more time. Um, and I'd recommend it for young adults and adults alike. Um, the penultimate choice is The Green Road by Anne Enright. This is set in Ireland and it's a story about a mum and her four grown up children. It starts when the children are younger and each child narrates a chapter of the of the book or section of the book. Um, it follows the the children as they come back together for a final time at the mum's house before she sells it and um each child tells the story and um it's about the relationships between parents and children and siblings and sibling rivalry and it goes um through um illnesses it goes through um alcoholism it goes through hiv and aids um it goes through aid working in uh, developing countries and it's all sort of anchored in Ireland and um, it's a, a really intriguing read, really good in-depth character studies and um, really well written. It was my first Anne Enright and I'm really looking forward to reading some more by her. And the final book is Tin Man by Sarah Winman, which was an absolutely stunning book about um, a relationship between three people. Um, a relationship between Michael and Ellis, who, which starts when they're children and grows into their adulthood together, and how their relationship changes when Annie comes along um, and um, Ellis falls in love with Annie. And it is just an absolutely stunningly beautiful book, which will make you cry and break your heart and make you love and make you laugh. And um, it's just absolutely gorgeous. I can't talk about it too much because I can't give away what happens in the story. Um, it's not a very big book. I read it really quickly. I forgot I do actually have it on my shelf. I thought I'd given it back. This is the book. My friend lent it to me um, and I've got it on behind me waiting to give back to her. I'm going to have to get my own copy just because it was so gorgeous. Um, I would recommend this book to anybody. It's absolutely stunning and... Um, I wish I could talk about it a bit more, but I really can't because I'll give away too many of the plot points. So that was my top books of the year so far. It will be interesting to see at the end of the year how many of them are still there or how many have been um, booted out for another one. Um, I'm also going to do um, top films of the year because I absolutely love films. So um, if you, I hope you'd like to see that. Maybe you can let me know in the comments. And um, I'm also planning on doing a video... Um, for a tag which I've been tagged in recently about books which help through difficult times. So that will be a really interesting tag because I have been having some difficult times lately. So um, good timing for that one. Um, so I will be back hopefully in um, within the next week with another video. Fingers crossed I won't have such a busy week this week. Okay, thanks guys. See you later. Bye.